Primal Chaos. Hey guys, Primal Chaos here, welcome to the channel. Uh, many astute viewers of the channel will know that lately my output's been diminished somewhat just because of, you know, a lot of things, life and stuff like that. But what it's meant is I've had to be really introspective about what videos I pursue. Uh, I still love to discover new stuff, but what I'm finding as I go through the comments and stuff like that is, you know, there's a lot of people who just are calling me out for not getting back to certain artists, you know, and as a result of that, I've, I've gone back through and the last few videos I've done have been uh, new material of artists that I've been ignoring for a year or more, right? And, and you know, Bandmate is one of those ones that always hits hard. It always goes, like, it always exceeds my expectations. And so in this case, I thought, you know what? They're a band that I have been ignoring for a while. And I know that, that you guys, the rabid fan base, uh, Maniacs, it's fair to call me out on that. So uh, as, as a result, here we are. I'm going to check out something new today. I went through, there's actually been a couple of new music videos that have come out. But realistically, I just wanted to jump into something fun today. I mean, it's all fun, but nothing for me is more exciting than watching artists like this actually performing live. So I've decided to go with a live video today. Maybe I'll get back to some music videos further down the track, but you just got to be patient with me because like I said, I'm, I'm sort of spinning a lot of plates currently and I will get around to it, but it just might take some time. Uh, so I'm going to dive right in. Band made, endless story, live official video. Come along on the ride with me. <laughs> Let's check it out. I'm excited actually, I'm really excited. Here we go. Nice. Oh, I like the production. Very cool. That's a cool shot. That's really cool. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love that. Before we get into the next bit, I got, I got a lot to say, actually. This is, uh, to me, and, and again, my experience with, with any of the bands that I react to is fairly limited. I've explained before, I tend not to dive down the rabbit hole of just checking everything out because it spoils reactions that might potentially come my way in the future and things like that. So the tragedy of being who I am and, and, and a lot of the other reactors is you come across bands like Bandmade that you fall in love with, uh, but there's this sort of sensation that you have to stay away from the catalog, right? You have to wait and wait it out. And to be honest, I don't hate that. I like, you know, uh, finding bands in, in measured ways because if you just start diving in and just bottoming out their, their, their catalog, a lot of times, a lot of those magical moments, those magical songs just fly by you as part of the group, you know? And so I find the so a song that will really blow your mind will come to you when the time is right. That's always been my feeling. And so, you know, it's, it's an odd way to enjoy bands. And I, I understand that and it can be frustrating for a lot of people. But to me, I love it because I've got so many interests and so many, my, my taste's fairly eclectic and it gets pulled in so many directions. 
Um, every once in a while, it's nice for something to just pop up out of the ether and go, oh, yeah, that bandmate song. I'm going to check that out. And it turns out to be just wonderful, right? This is one of those songs that is quintessentially designed for a live performance. And the reason I say that is because it's uplifting, it's heartfelt, it's got that sort of emotional connectivity woven through it, um, melodically, but also lyrically and all that sort of stuff. But also it's uplifting. The vibe of the music is uplifting. And one of the key facets of that is, is Misa playing around with the octaves. Like she's, she's doing a lot of high work on her bass, right? Uh, and the way that she gets away with that is one, she's amazing. But also, if you listen to a bass tone, you'll notice it's quite rounded off. There's not a lot of high end in it like you'd find in sort of like a, a punk band or something like that. You know, she's she's got that sort of more classic uh, jazz-inspired sort of tone, but obviously with a very rock flavor to it. Um, but you, you'll hear her doing those sort of moves where she'll she'll play the fundamental sort of sort of things down here, but you'll see a sort of, oh, hang on, and then she'll move up to... I can't play bass to save my life, but you get the idea. These little licks that sort of go, and, and a lot of the moving up with a like a sort of sort of things. And again, I'm just trying to illustrate, okay? This is not me showing you how good of a bass player I am. But those it's those moving passages that sort of move up through the neck and then back down and then go back up. That's what gets you those that sort of sensation of uplifting sort of feeling, right? Uh, it also adds pace. It, it sort of feels like your heart's being pulled along. And that's that's the magic of somebody who knows composition and knows how to sort of elicit those feelings by doing certain things. You know, I'll go back through and I'll, I'll point out what I'm talking about. Those little things, right? Do -do 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 -do. You get, it's, it's like a lot of the, the licks she's doing are sort of moving upwards. You know, and that sort of, it sort of bolsters everything and allows everything to sit on top comfortably, maintaining like the harmony, but you've got this fundamental low end that's sort of driving the emotion from the bottom up. It's really, really cool. That said, the other thing I want to talk about, the reason her bass tone is so successful as well is because there's plenty of edginess in the song already. It doesn't need it. it and because they, they sort of all sit in their own little pocket sonically, there's enough room for the bass to exist without it feeling like it's being buried. And I mean, this is, this is what I'm talking about. These ch choral sort of chant moments engage the audience so deeply that they feel like they're part of this emotional experience that they're sharing with the band rather than we're over here as the, as the audience and the band is performing to us. Now it's a group. Another band that does this amazingly is 30 Seconds to Mars, more so with their sort of mid catalog stuff, not so much the newer stuff, um, like the, the songs from This Is War, for example. And again, you'll find a lot of the same sort of bass lines because they know how to engage a crowd, right? They just know how to do it. The other one is One OK Rock, amazing at this as well. And I, I don't know, maybe it's something to do with like, um, the con you know, Japanese music sort of sits in its own little bubble of uniqueness, even though it draws so much from around it, like as far as, you know, influence and stuff like that, they have their own way of making very emotionally connected music. You can hear it in every anime theme song ever created. Um, and every band in Japan sounds different and there's so many different genres thrown together. But one thing that's sort of fairly common is that ability to imbue the music with so much more emotion. I'm gonna continue on because I've talked a lot. Like, who, who doesn't want to be part of this? Yes! Power, right? That's power. It's a power move. Oh, the bass is so good. Great rhythms throughout. One of the things I always talk about, and, and again, I, I know this is frustrating. I'll, I'll continue on from here, I won't go back, but 
is the thing that makes a great song as far as pop music goes, in fact, with, with any genre of music, is surprises, little pops of interest, things that change the game, things where you're expecting something and they do a bait and switch. The very s simplest one of these is, you know, for say, for example, every chorus, they'll have like a chorus outro or something like that. That'll go for like two bars and then they'll go back into the song. But then the, 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 the one in the last chorus, they'll extend that to four. And so everybody's ready to start singing again, but no, we're going to draw it out a little bit longer before we hit that mark, right? And that's like, uh, that's fairly common. But even just using crazy samples or dropping the band out, like in the intro, right before when everyone's singing, the band drops out for a bar right before the drum fill comes in. And it's a little bit of a shock to everyone. You're like, oh, okay. And then we're back, right? But that little moment there before the chorus cuts in is one of those moments. I was expecting, here comes the chorus. And then we're just going to wait a few beats. And it just makes it so much more effective because you've got this bombastic verse that's got a lot of movement and you've got this chorus that's loud and proud and big. And if you merge them together like that, it's not that big a jump. But if you drop the band out and just put some, you know, guitar slashes in there, suddenly there's enough of a gap for your ear to sort of pull back just before it comes back again. This is the genius of great pop composition. It's really good. As always, great harmonies. Come on. That lead part's crazy. That's really cool. Nice. I know it's going somewhere. <laughs> I'm going to go back a little bit, but one thing I just noticed in the chorus that's really interesting is it's real easy to just write like, you know, a few bars of a chorus and just have it throughout with a strong melody, right? That's the key is just having an engaging melody that's uplifting and powerful against a background. But if you listen back to this chorus, there's actually three different types of rhythmic moments in it that, that make it like it couldn't be less boring, right? Halftime feel, right? We do that twice, lull you into a sense of security, and now we're going to double time it. Super interesting, right? And then we're going to pull it back again. Halftime. There's that bass again. <laughs> oh, this is nice. That bass tone is so good. Oh, this went longer than I expected. Just great drums too, just classic straight up.
Warwick, hang on. Was she always using a pick? Okay, there you go. Nothing wrong with that. But th that's the interesting thing is she's got the 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 high end rolled off quite a lot, so to to account for that, so you don't hear a lot of that sort of clicky sort of pick noise. It's really impressive, actually, because like the funny thing is a lot of the riffs she's doing would probably you know if if you were competent as a fingerstyle bassist, and and for that I'm talking about there's, there's two types of bass players, right? I'm trying to get it where you can actually see. Um, classically, like you know, guys like Jaco Pistorius or um, you know, I mean, especially even funk players, players that use a lot of like, um, sort of thumb, thumb style things, um, will, you know, they'll play with like this sort of like, and you can, it allows you to get around the strings a little easier if you're using, uh, like it's almost like classical guitar flamenco style fingering, right? Um, or you can grab a pick and, but I find that it's just a little bit, a little bit trickier to get, you know, to some of those things with a pick, but that's just me. And, you know, <laughs> there'll be people who will argue that it's, you're not a bass player if you use a pick and there's other people that will be like agnostic and then there's other people that like, finger style doesn't make any sense. And I think it also matters genre wise as well. You know, there's actually an, in, an interesting moment in the uh, Metallica documentary when they hired, uh, I, can, I can't think of his name right now, the guy from Suicidal Tendencies. And, you know, they were, they were all in the room and he was auditioning and they're like, oh, why don't we play this song? I can't remember what it was, Battery or something. And he's like, they're like, oh, all right, cool. Yeah, hard hard on the bass, whatever. And 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 he's like, and and Headfield, I think it was, says, you're, you're going to play that finger style? And he's like, yeah, man. <laughs> and he's like, okay. And he does the song and just nails it, right? Um, and that's, 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 there's two schools of thought on it. I'm agnostic. I say do whatever feels right for you or whatever serves the song. And I mean, maybe Misa does both. I have no idea. But yeah, that was just a little, I was blindsided by that because her tone sounds very much like fingerstyle. That's why I sort of, I saw it differently to how I heard it, right? Like really strange. Now, that's a great way to end the show, man. Yeah, bring it back. She is not afraid of the high notes, man. <laughs> Come on. Come on, that's the end of the show, brother. Wow. They're all superstars, man.
come on. Very, very cool. They make things sound so much easier than they are uh, because it seems, it feels effortless, right? And it's because they stay in their lane, they know their strengths, they push their strengths, they have a diverse range of different music that they can produce, but they know exactly how each of them becomes the, you know, the parts that make up the sum. And you never feel like it's overwhelming, even though these guys have this propensity to leave no air gaps, typically, you know, with the exception of things that are there for very specific effect. You know, there'll always be in between vocal lines, there'll be a harmony or like a little call out from, from Miku or someone to sort of, you know, keep the momentum rolling. And so that can get overwhelming when you don't have a lot of breathing room. And the way that they, they manage that is by making it feel effortless, you know, and it's, they're so good. The other thing I want to do is jump back real quick and check out that bridge again. Here we go. Ah, great vocal too. God, that moves so beautifully, right? And the bass. Again, it's always the bass. And it just, it brings in another excuse to have that call and response with the audience. It's not really call and response, but you know what I mean? Those choral moments, right? It's just an excuse to have that call back to that melody, that choral moment, which is like, you know, like the, oh, 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 oh whatever it is. It's, it's an easy melody for everybody to sing, which is, is genius. You know, writing songs to have other people sing that are really high or really low, or, you know, this is great because it's high enough for higher voices to sing it naturally. It's low enough that, you know, lower voices can sing an octave lower and not bottom out. It's, it's perfect. It really is. And this bridge just gives it halfway through. It just gives you an opportunity to have that again, another personal moment with the audience. And again, they do it at the end as well. So this song is as much about the crowd as it is about the band. And that's, that's a beautiful thing. Nami again doing a little um, textural guitar playing. So good, so good. I mean, round of applause. This is a great composition by a band that has been around long enough and to know how to do it, how to write perfect pop songs, perfect pop rock songs, engaging rock songs. There's not a, a note out of place. There's nothing that doesn't need to be there. And yet it's still so full and rich, you know, and colourful and, and moody and emotional. And, and it has that floatiness to it that you just want at the end of a gig where you've just been punished for an hour and a half of, you know, heavy rock and jumping around and, and chaos. And then you just, you, it's like, it's the hug after the fight at fight club. You know what I mean? Like that's the beauty of it. It's, it's, it's a warm, loving embrace from the band with the audience. And that's, that's pure genius. And I don't think I can say anything better about it than that. So we'll leave it there, but thanks again, if you stuck around this long, as always, if you feel like supporting the channel, just buy me a coffee. I'll leave a link in the description. Uh, you know, like, share, follow, subscribe. If you're on any band made discords or whatever, feel free to share this with them. Um, the more eyeballs on this, the better, you know, I love getting my re reactions out there to people so they can enjoy them. And the best way I know how to do that is for you guys to jump on it. Also comment, what should I do next? What's your favorite point about this song? Maybe let me know something I missed. There's always a million things that I missed in these reactions, but thanks again for sticking around. I love all of you guys. Stay primal. I'll catch you on the next one.